<laughs> oh, baby, here we go. Lesson number 3080. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is the most super sensitive superstar in the history of sports. But him and Michael Jordan shared this common thing that's uh, in play right now today. And the reason is, it's just like a child. If you have a child that's raised that every time he cries, people give that child what he wants. Every time he cries and complains, people give him what he wants. The older he gets, he thinks every time he cries, somebody is supposed to give him what he wants. Now, LeBron James, He wants Kyrie Irving. Last year, he wanted Russell Westbrook. Then, as the season played out, he didn't want Russell Westbrook no more. Now, he wants another new toy. He wants his old toy he used to play with. Kyrie Irving. So, I guess he thought Kyrie would opt out of $36 million, take the basic minimum $6 million the Lakers could offer him, and just play then and lose out on $30 million. And then lose all your bargaining <laughs> positioning um, playing basically free of a contract. Now, if Kyrie gets injured, that gamble, he just lost $30 million, got $6 million. Look, it's not about you, LeBron. It's not always about you. And this is what the whole NBA and why it was drowning is because Adam Silver Slipper kept milking the same damn thing over and over again. And this was David Stern's problem. He fell in love with the Los Angeles Lakers. And he's like, well, they asked him what it was his dream NBA Finals be. He said, Lakers versus Lakers. That was David Stern. A commissioner for the National Basketball Association said that his dream NBA Finals would be Lakers versus Lakers. So that lets you know, if you're the other teams in the organization, you're like, well, damn, we don't have a fair shot here. He's looking at sports markets. But the Lakers aren't the biggest show in town. See, that's the mirage. You look at the Lakers dynasty. They got a legacy. They got magic. They got Kobe and Shaq. They had, this is where the legacy, the history. Yeah, they carry that around like a torch. But this is the new age. The new age could give a damn about what they did in the past. They want to win now. So the new age is in Golden State. It's in the Bay. It's in San Francisco now. The Clippers have been better than the Lakers for a decade. They ain't got no championship, though. But they better than the Los Angeles Lakers. And guess what? People are going to Clippers games. They're contending every year. They're going to the playoffs. Now, next season, they're going to be even better. Now, here's the big news flash. Why didn't John Wall go to the Lakers and take that $6 million after he just got bought out?
You still got Russ on the books. But if I'm Russell Westbrook, I don't want to play with the Lakers no more. This is a team that don't want me. And believe me, the Clippers are not resting. They're going to always try to be better than the Lakers because that's what it's about. Beating the Lakers each and every time they play. Well, Kawhi Leonard was able to not have to play back-to-backs. And he had an exemption. Where the, everybody else in the league was getting fined. And LeBron took that personally. So he decided to use his media to go out and complain about Kawhi Leonard being able to rest. Night in and night out, and why he gets to have this, and Kawhi has so much power with the Clippers, and it's causing a rift between the players because Kawhi gets to do whatever he wants to do. And LeBron started all of it, sicking his media dogs who he didn't got hired over there, starting with that no good Rachel Nichols. Every 10 seconds, keep bringing it up. Because that's what she does. She causes confusion. So. Everyone said Luka Doncic was getting better than LeBron. All of his stats, since you guys are stats fans, are better than LeBron's when LeBron came into the league. So, Luka came in the league at what, 19? LeBron was 18. Look where Luka is now. All of his numbers, triple doubles, points, rebounds, assists, steals. All higher than LeBron in the same amount of games that they played. So when I said, if he played 20 years, he would surpass LeBron easy in stats. And you're going to find out that all these things LeBron James have done will all be eclipsed. Because these younger players are doing it faster than he did it. And to show you, he didn't do all this stuff until his last three, four years. He wasn't getting triple doubles. He could have been getting triple doubles his whole career. He wasn't doing that. Then Russell Westbrook started doing it, and he's like, oh, let me start doing that. Russ averaged a triple double for a whole season. Oh, he did it again. Oh, let me start getting some triple doubles. Abuse of power. That's this guy. Now, I want Laker fans. To hear me out. When have you ever heard people say, we got to get Michael Jordan some help? They said it back in the day. But it was never a cry that Michael needed it because Michael couldn't do it himself. Mike needed somebody to join him in order to help him beat the Pistons. He just needed... Uh, somebody to step up. LeBron got AD. That ain't enough. Michael Jordan has Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen. And made him a top 50 NBA player. Made him. One of the people that some of these people think is one of the greatest players, one of the biggest illusions of all time, Scottie Pippen, a role player. He's nothing but, that's like honoring Chris Middleton and saying, man, that Chris Middleton, man, he one of the top 50 players of all time. That sounds ridiculous now if we say that, right? 
But I tell you what, Chris Middleton is probably at the same level of Scottie Pippen. They just don't have six championships. But Middleton is Scottie Pippen. They're role players. Not franchise players. Middleton can't lead a team. It's not going to happen. And hell, he might be better than Scotty Pippen. But the point is, all Mike had was Scotty. LeBron has had more help than any professional athlete in history. He's going in with a stacked debt at all the time, every year. So it's not like he's taking a team every year, remixing it, and going back to the finals. He's getting some of the best of the best talent in the league. And you guys are rooting for it. Lynn, we got to get Kyrie with LeBron. We got to get this person with LeBron. Why can't LeBron ever win with what he got? He had Carmelo Anthony on his team. Russell Westbrook. Anthony Davis. Like the, It's like everybody on that team was capable of scoring points. And at some point in, in the, their time was incredible. Melo did exactly what he did in Portland. And everyone think LeBron played outstanding. He didn't. Anthony Davis was more of a disappointment than Russell Westbrook to me. Russ was out there competing. This dude is doing, trying to go for best dress. Since the Lakers have gotten Anthony Davis. I don't think he's played in the last two years. He's probably missed 40, 50 games at least. And he's unfortunately, but statistically speaking, he's going to get hurt again next season. We don't wish that on him. Statistically speaking, it's coming. You just hope it don't happen in the playoffs like it always do. But this happened in New Orleans. And they signed him to that big deal, even though they knew he got hurt. They said, well, when he beef up and get to the weight room, you know, then he'll start to fill out and we're going to take the chance. The next thing you know, he's getting out of there. Well, what's the common denominator? What is the common flaw, the common problem, the common issue? That issue is LeBron James. He's the problem. People have to understand something. When you, when you um, start talking about the best players in the world or the best anything, you want to talk about the style of the game. How it's played. Younger players, you know, such as J.J. Reddick and things of that nature. You know, J.J.'s a good guy. I don't have no problem with him, but, you know, when you start saying people from their older days, like Bob Cousy was pissed. You know, that the disrespect that you guys make all these millions of dollars and made 10 times more than what they did when they played. But you're standing on those guys' shoulders. Like, they played and kept the league exciting and made the game interesting 
so it could be passed on to generations. And instead of honoring them, you disrespect them by calling them firemen. He was like, yeah, some of us might have been firemen and doing everything else and playing in the league. But those guys were tough. They didn't miss games. <laughs> they were a whole different breed. See, people nowadays are becoming more docile, more fragile, and less durable than people back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. You know, that's it's just like, I don't know what it is, if it's the delusion of, of all the mixing that's going on or what, but people are getting softer and softer. And more brittle. People used to work under incredible conditions that is not suitable for a human being, but they did it because they had to do it. Working under the sun for nine, ten hours straight with just a half of a water break, people passing out, getting beat for passing out through slavery and all of this and they endured all of that just so the next generation could survive and what we do put chains around our neck and jewelry and rings and brag we get a fast car and a nice house we went from family to individual and since then, we've been losing. Now, LeBron James, he's going to find a way to get back in the game to be relevant because he needs that attention. He needs people to be focused on him at all times. He wants to hijack people's moments, everything. Someone else wins the championship, here he comes. Yeah, it was good, man. That game was great. Y'all did great. Congratulations. It's like, dude, it's not about you. This is a badminton tournament. What is you doing here? Yo, congratulations, man. Seen Young Chu. Man, he a bad mother. Y'all better watch him, man, in badminton. He's something else. I want to say congratulations. It's like, who, why are you here? <laughs> so that's how I see it the man is thin skinned he has a problem his ego he's a narcissistic human being and his minions just drive me crazy. The way they try to come out and defend him. And they crying like Kyrie Irving. Like that was a realistic option. Um, I mean, they still in for the sign and trade. He just signed into the deal. So now they can talk about doing his four-year deal and getting it done. Now that he's opted into the contract. But still, they're going to have to work on getting an extension done. Or could it still be a sign and trade? So, it, it, I mean, I guess he's going to work it out with the Lakers or whatever. But I hope the Lakers get him. Because you're not winning a championship with that team. Lakers are not winning. Can you imagine that? Kyrie and LeBron back together again and all of that. And what that means for... All the other teams, I mean, that's two players. Then what about AD now? Right? I mean, it'd be great for LeBron. He got someone else he could trust with the basketball. But can you trust Kyrie being healthy? Down the stretch. So you got two guys who are injury prone. Who both could be out and then you're out there by yourself.
So anyway, thank you guys, man, for tuning in, liking the video, hitting up my cash app. That was nice. Thank you. I appreciate the love and support. Anyway, I'm out. God bless.